what about mental illness? God, what about mental health issues? People have been told, you may have heard this, and it hurt. If you struggle with depression or anxiety or whatever else, you must not trust God. Now, well-meaning people have said stuff like that. Many people wonder, where's my faith if I'm struggling? If there's a God in heaven, why is there hell in my head? If you struggle in some manner or another, it doesn't mean that you don't have faith in God or that you don't trust God. But what can happen is that we give in and we get stuck. And here's how stuck can sound. I struggle with anxiety, so I can't go with you. I struggle with depression, so I can't help you. When I had that accident, my brain was altered. I can no longer be held responsible. I have been abused, and so I can't let you into my life. My brain was short-circuited when I was 10 with pornography, and now I just can't quit. I've been emotionally hurt, so I can't trust you. That's what stuck sounds like. You know, some people call Disneyland the happiest place on earth. And you know, you know what I'm talking about. You go there, and it is kind of a creepy, happy place. But churches can kind of come off like creepy, happy, too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you walk in the door, people have kind of put themselves together to be here, and they, how you doing? I'm just great. How you doing? I'm just great. Good to see you. When, in fact, there's any number of people just like at Disneyland today or just like at Third City today here or, or wherever where you come in and you, there's pain, and you're masking it, and you're playing some kind of game with that. And maybe we are too. I don't know. But there's someone who's here, and that's why we're here. And that's the Lord Jesus who gets you. As a matter of fact, here's what it says in Hebrews 4.15. We do not have a high priest, that's Jesus, who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, with our struggles. Because we have one who has been tempted in every way like we have, and yet he didn't sin. He gets you. Yeah, but I struggle. Well, he struggled too. I mean, there, there are actually times, when at least one time in particular, where, where people thought he had certifiably lost his mind. It was his family. It says that in, in Mark chapter 3 that they came to take hold of him because they thought he had lost his mind. Okay. So he understands if you feel that way about yourself or others are saying that about you, he understands that because he's been there. Now, I want to admit at the outset, this is kind of a warning in the beginning, kind of like, like when you open up a documentary or a TED Talk or a YouTube item or something. Here's the warning. The following sermon addresses serious issues relating to mental health, mental illness, and even suicidal thoughts. If you are considering hurting yourself or others, seek help immediately. <laughs> I'm a preacher. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Uh, I'm not even a very good counselor, to be honest. <laughs> but I have a lot of conversations with people, hundreds and hundreds of them, where they're struggling. And after meeting with them, what I might say to them is, I will pray for you. I will support you. I'm going to make an appointment for you. I'm going to help you make an appointment with a professional who will get this deeper than I do. I, that's important. It's important to know that there's, sometimes there's a pro you need. But because I'm a preacher, I view every human challenge from the paradigm of God's word. So here's another disclaimer. I think this is the most important one. Without God in the struggle, no counselor, no mental health advisor... No counseling resource will be able to bring you to the place of peace that you are searching for without God. Because no one gets you like God gets you. 
So you're thinking, well, I mean, you could be. You might be thinking, well, okay, if God gets me, why? Why am I in so much emotional pain? Why can't I beat this? Why can't I get better? I'm the preacher, okay? Remember, I'm going to go to his, I'm going to go to consult with him. So let's just look at some things that might help in that question. Here's the first thing. If we're going to, if we're going to be in this, let's name it. Because I noticed this about Jesus. Now, you can read through the same gospels I do. You read through all the experiences that he had, and oftentimes when he encounters someone with a problem, whatever it is, physical, emotional, spiritual, a combination thereof, oftentimes what he does is he helps them name the issue. There's something very important about naming it. I'm depressed. I'm so angry and bitter. I'm exhausted. I can't get past the guilt of something that I've done in my life. I can't forgive them. I've tried and tried. I'm so selfish, so needy. I'm bipolar. I'm confused sexually. I am hooked on this. I can't, I can't break it. I had that injury when I was 15, and ever since then, I've just been, I'm just struggling. Name it. Because the first step in getting somewhere is to say where you are in the first place. Naming it is the first step in defining it and not letting it define you. Okay? Here's the second thing. Let's get help. If you struggle, get some tools to change the dynamics. Let's hear from people who are on the same path and who are winning on the path who are making progress themselves. Let's get good Bible-based counseling. Let's get friends who actually will love us, cry with us, talk us through it, but not enable us to continue to stay in the sickness that's breaking us. Because you probably already know this, it's part of your frustration. There are a whole lot of people in this world who don't get it. They don't understand what you're going through because they're not going through it. And they might say they understand, but they really don't understand because they're not you. They're not like you. And that's frustrating. But what can happen with that is then we start creating lies around it. The lies sound like this. They don't really care about me. I'm the only one who feels this way. I'm just the only one. Well, they think I'm a burden. They'd be better off without me. This is hard to talk about. I had a hard time getting through it the first time, so I probably will this time too. Travis and Lori Pritchard, Pritchard were married for almost 20 years. Travis took his life on her birthday, leaving gifts on the counter. No one saw it coming. She said, I looked back and I thought, well, there's some clues, but they weren't very strong. But she started reading his journals and realized that he had some deep, deep issues that he wasn't dealing with or letting her in on. And he, he described his depression as the bully in his brain, a relentless voice that continually told him, you're not good enough. You will never be enough. Lori said, why does a person kill himself because they simply don't think they can live another day. The bully in his brain would not let him off. It was relentless. But he downplayed it. He, he didn't talk to her about it. She said, "Oh, looking back, there were a few little clues. But she said, I never knew. He was an unbelievable actor. Now, for those of us who don't know what to do to help, which is pretty much everybody, here's, here's the, adv the haunting advice she gives us. Don't let the person you love talk you out of your concern for them. People do care. We would help. We may not know what it's like to be you. We may not understand how you're feeling. We may not say the right things. We probably won't, but we do care. 
And there are people who can get you because they are like you. And remember the one who made you? He gets you. He empathizes with your weaknesses. So here's a, here's a third thing that I think comes out of these scriptures that we come here to learn from. Let's be in it to win it. Let's be in it to win it. Let's be in it. I want to I I emphasize that little in word, in it, in the struggle. We don't run from it. We don't pretend it's not there. We get into it. The struggle is never retreat. It's never, it's never quit. It's always just moving in and going forward. The struggle is fighting. The struggle means I am going to do this for my spouse, for my kids, for my parents, for my children. I'm in it. I'm going to struggle. I'm going to let Jesus in it with me. You know, a year after Travis's decision, Lori Pritchard said, if only people would view depression like cancer. It's not a medical flaw. It's not a character failure. It is a struggle that you just face and overcome step by step. She's adamant. She said, what Trav did to us and what he failed to do, not okay. Not for the people left behind. The worst moment of my life is when I had to tell their children, I think they were 8 and 10 at the time, what their father did. I wanted to tell them anything but what he did. A counselor helped me with these words. Your father died from depression. He took his own life. I think there's a lot of sympathy for people who are hurting, at least at some level. But what about those who are left behind? Because that's the question she's asking. Lori said, had, had he understood the pain he was inflicting on us, I am confident he would never have made that choice. But I will spend the rest of my life trying to tell my children, uh, trying to keep my children alive. The bully in the brain made him believe that we would be better off without him. That would be comical, she said if it weren't so tragic. What Lori saw in the most horrific way possible is that Travis quit struggling. Now again, Christ will struggle with you. That's what his spirit brings to it. I I like how Philippians 4.13 says it. I can do anything through Christ who gives me the strength. I can do anything through Christ who gives me the strength. But there has to be a decision in there for you that you will no longer let it define you and rather you will surrender to him and say, you be my definition. You step into this. I surrender to you. Be free. Be on the winning team. I mean, be better. You can like you even if you struggle with you. Do you believe that? Like, you can, you, can, you can like you even if you have struggles, but, but sometimes it comes down to this. What kind of power are you tapping into? Like you say, well, I got all kinds of power. I got me. I got a pretty good counselor. Um, uh, I've been given some meds that help me. Uh, or maybe it's even in a more, I guess, in a more difficult way you'd say, well, yeah, I just feel like if I drink, it just masks and hurts. It kind of numbs the pain. Uh, if I go into my hole, you know, if I go into my dark place, well, then I can at least not hear the voices as much. Or, or do you? That's a good question. I have friends who just hand me excuses on another drink or a joint. I got my powerful brain bullying excuses and lies. None of that works, does it? So let's get empowered. The question is, why not let something really powerful influence your, your struggle? Like, like, would you let him in? Like, like why not? Why not? It's not is it just going to be you? Is it just going to be you and then them, the people who, and the mechanisms you've brought into it? Or will you let him into this? Is he God or not? 
Is he with you or not? Will you let him in or not? Is he hearing, I need you, God? Or are you sending kind of vibe that says, you know what, I need this more than I need you? Like sometimes this is the thing. I need this because of what it does for me or to me. Sometimes the thing is a coping mechanism. Sometimes it's an amusement that keeps your mind off the issues that you face. Or it's some relationship that's just another relationship that makes you feel better now, but it's going to break you like the last one did. Are you letting Christ lead you or have you left him? Is he still God or are you God? Or is it God? He is still God. I don't care what you think about you and it. I don't care what you've been telling yourself. With your cooperation, with his power, he and you, you can do this. No matter what your co-conspirators say. I don't care what your parents tell you. I don't care what your ex or your secular counselor is saying to you. With God, you can break the chain. But you got to name it, and you got to stand up to it. You got to help, get help, and tap into Him, because He is really powerful. If you'll let Him bring that power to you. But but here's I think the biggest challenge of all. This is my own personal reflection based on my own life. Let's stand up to ourselves. It might be the hardest part if I'm going to stand up to myself. I wonder if the most mentally healthy people on earth, regardless of what they're challenged with, I wonder if the most healthy people on earth are the ones who are just able to say, I'm going to stand up to myself. Because we're trying to answer this question, what about mental health? What about mental illness? If there's a God, why is there mental distress? Why can't I beat this? Why do I feel so hopeless? Why do I feel like death warmed over? And well, you'll hear it a lot here, but it sounds different than what you might hear it somewhere else, but I understand that. But, but it has to be said if I'm going to get to the bottom of the matter, and I'm not going to say it. I'm going to let Romans chapter 5 verse, verse 12 say it. Here's what it says. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in that way, death came to all people because all have sinned. So here's what a feckless world tells us. Ah, you're broken. Eh, you know, you're hopeless. Eh, you don't have the power to change this. It's just the way you are. You know, just go with it. Let it do what it does. Accept it. Now, to be honest, sometimes the most effective liar in my life is me. Like, like you know, the, the, the worst voice in my head that comes into my head is the one that's in my head. So let's go on in Romans chapter 5, understand this, see where God is in this. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, we also glory in our, ooh, listen to this, I don't like this, but it's true if you understand God from it. We glory in our sufferings because we know, we can learn this, that suffering produces some really good things like perseverance, character, hope. And here's the thing about hope. Hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, the power source of God who he has given us. So here, here's the thing. Let's let God stand with us. Like honestly, all the questions in this series have started to be truthful with the wrong assumption. God, why? Why? I think that's one of the most useless questions on earth, to be honest. Like, God, why is there racial and uh, racial hatred and division? We talked about that back in June. And God, why all the politics and division? Parker had a great message on that on July 5th. God, why do people suffer? God, why should I even care about the environment? It's so broken and it's beyond compare, beyond repair. 
God, God, what about this issue of mental distress and mental illness? What do you, where are you in that? I mean, I understand why we ask the question, but here's the right question in my mind. If God is for us, then who can be against us? That's the question. And the, and the answer is nobody, nothing. He gives us access to him, and it's called grace. God gives us the kind of hope that we can actually boast about. Because instead of letting our suffering break us, he, 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 lets, he comes into it. He steps into it and he walks with us in it so that great things can come from it. Things like perseverance and hope. Power. If God is for you, what possibly can fight that and win? Nothing that's what? Amen and period. You know, Bob Goff wrote a book called Living Grace. And it says this, realize that you are terribly needy, and that's a good thing. We need Jesus. That's why we fight through it. That's why we don't accept the lies. That's why we don't just stay in the pity party. That's why we don't Get let the dark recess swallow us up again and again and again. That's why we don't roll over and let it kill us. That's why we don't let the world define us and peg us. Why? Because who can stand against the almighty God who fights for me and with me? Who? No one. Nothing. Not it, not them, not anything. Nothing and no one, that's who. So, stop accepting your past as the default for your decisions tomorrow. We name it, but we don't let it define us. We don't rely on our struggles and excuse. We don't use some clinical diagnosis as our permission to wake up tomorrow and do the same thing that broke me yesterday. Our brain is an incredibly complicated organism, but very few of us, no matter how much damage we may have incurred, very few of us have lost the ability to choose a better path tomorrow. I can't is generally an excuse for I won't. See, it's always better to think about things the way Jesus does. And, and he can see things that I can't see. Let me explain that for a minute. The Bible says that he goes before you. So when you wake up tomorrow morning and like, you know, you, you know the weekends sometimes, you know, you, you're, you're able to live it out and kind of, you know, go through the motions of life. And then, but, but what's looming is Monday morning. And, and so even Sunday night, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get up tomorrow. I'm going to be anxious. I'm going to be worried. I got problems. I got to solve some stuff. I got, I'm going to be anxious about it when I get up. Well, guess what? When your alarm goes off tomorrow morning, It's not like that's God's alarm, okay? God didn't just, okay, I'm going to wake up and we're going to face this. It's a new day for me too. God's going before you in all this. He sees it long before you do. God doesn't follow me into stressful situations and hard decisions and anxious relationships and temptation. I mean, he's waiting to support me and to help me. But you got to let him in. So when you get to this challenge and you don't see it and you don't... You can't see how this could possibly good. He says, I'm going to go with you, but I've been before you to make it it possible. No, he won't do it for you. That's a misnomer too. Like, oh, you know, I'm just going to pray that God will do this for me. He doesn't do stuff for us. Not like that. Like, he'll do it with you. You might think, well, God, why did you bring this to me? Why did you bring depression to me? Why this anxiety? Why this addiction? Why this rapid cycling bipolar disorder? What if you just asked a different question now? What if the question you asked is this? God, will you come with me into this? Will you come with me into this? I'm telling you, he will. I just, I want to try to help paint a vision for a future for you. I think this is fair. In the future, when your kids ask you, Mom, Dad, how did you do it? Because I know it was hard. I know you struggled. Because they know. What are you going to tell them? 
eh, just decided to give up. Just decided it was too hard. That's why I quit church. They didn't get me. I quit trying because I felt so unworthy. I just gave up because I couldn't seem to win. I just gave up on sobriety because the pain was so intense. Drinking just seemed like a better option. I just gave up on my dignity and I gave another man my sexual purity like I gave the other man before him and the one before that because it was just the way to mask the pain of the brokenness I had before. I just couldn't beat it, so I caved. I gave up. Is that the story? What about this one? I just stopped struggling on my own strength. I let go. I let God. I know it's cliche, but hey. I stopped believing the lies. I lean into the truth as God speaks it. And the truth is this. He is for me. Nothing in all creation can stand against him and me. I saw that, that he has what I need to struggle. It's not the story that I want to tell because I don't want to struggle, but it's the story I have. And every day I fought. Every day I fought for my sobriety. Every day I fought for, my, for forgiveness from others and to give it. Every day, I had to fight for it. My, I had to fight against my selfishness, my narcissism. Every day, I did that by serving someone else, including you guys. I fought for my freedom from the lies. I fought every day against my shameful past and the things that were said about me. I fought every day to get out of bed and do my job and put food on the table and to love you guys that way. I fought every inch of the way because when I ran from it, it was killing me. When I ran into it with him, I started winning. And I won every day when he fought with me and I let him. And greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Fight. Struggle. Don't do it alone. Lord, this communion is really my declaration. It's where I say, here's the one who stepped into my struggle in such a clear and powerful way. You stepped in. You gave it. You gave yourself so I could win. This is how I fight my battles. This bread, this cup, symbolic that you win and I'm going to struggle with you. That's how I'm going to take it today, Lord. Oh, uh, he, get, he gets you. And you know what? He's not intimidated by you. He gets you, and he's not so shocked by your past that he can't step into your future. Oh, no, he gets you. And he'll go before you. And he'll go with you if you let him. One of the beautiful things about his testimony to us on earth, so many, everything, he just knew how to take care of himself. Like, there are many places in the scripture where he had to say, and with God, by the way, he had to step into God again and say, God, this is too much for me, help me. I know it's hard to believe because he is God, he's God in the flesh, but he needed God to help him to come into it when he fought temptation in the wilderness, when his cousin John was murdered and he was grieving, when he went to that well that day with that, and met that woman who had all kinds of things going on in her life, but before that, he told his disciples, you guys go to town, I'm exhausted. I gotta rest. Self-care. I guess I would just encourage you with that, okay? Practice a step of self-care. If you recognize there's something, don't take it alone because you will fail. Let him in. He'll do it if you'll trust him. You know, we talk a lot here about how to get uh, help. Uh, we give you all kinds of resources on the, online, through our app. We always invite you to go to the hub if you have some challenges that we can help you with. That invitation is open. We want to help any way we can, and we'll do everything we can to help you take the next step as you struggle with him. 
let us, let us minister to you. We want to do that.